Hello there and welcome back. In this video we're going to cover operating systems and there are more videos after this that cover the full chapter so make sure you give those a watch as well. We're going to start today's video looking at a little bit of AS revision. There's a few things that we've got to cover before we get stuck into operating systems themselves. But in the total chapter, we have to talk about operating systems, the different types, interrupts, memory management and buffering, scheduling and high level scheduling, and what priority means in that, and also explain the role of time slicing, polling and threading. And tagged onto the end is safety related systems. So let's kick off then looking at batch systems. A batch system uses master and transaction files they have a large number of similar tasks. They're very repetitive, and they can be run with no user intervention at all, other than to start off the sequence. And they're able to run during office hours off peak when there's a light load on the computers. Now you may be asked to draw the diagram of batch processing and how it produces bills, for example, and that'd be worth approximately four marks. The next thing to look at is single user operating systems. This is when one user uses the system at one time and they have full control over all of the system resources and processor time. A single user operating system will create home directories, documents and picture folders for example for each user that is logged in at any one time. And those home directories are only available to the user or the admin, whoever's logged in at that time. No multiple logins here. If you do want to use multiple login, then you'll have to look at multi-user operating systems. These are operating systems that run on more powerful computers or servers and can allow time sharing of system resources by multiple people simultaneously. So the server hosts all the users. A multi-user operating system allows users to log in remotely and each user can have their own visual display unit and be connected via a network. And that means that the visual display unit doesn't have much processing power, it uses all the processing power of the server and this can reduce costs overall for hardware. And there are more benefits of using multi-user operating systems because devices will connect remotely to the server and run applications on there. And this means we can push out a number of different technologies to our computer systems. It's much better for maintenance and we can control things from one easy location. Now we need to talk about multitasking. Multitasking is the process of swapping applications in and out of the CPU. It gives the illusion that they are running in parallel when in actual fact they're not because computers are serial machines by definition and can only do one thing at one time per processor. The operating system ensures that each process is swapped in and out so that the user is under the illusion all the time. The illusion can be easily shattered though if the operating system crashes or one of your programs doesn't respond. So what about the difference between multitasking and multiprogramming? Multiprogramming computer systems store more than one job in the computer's main memory at the same time. These jobs appear to be processed by the computer CPU simultaneously, so it's that illusion again. This is making sure that we keep in the correct data on RAM at any one time, so that it can be quickly loaded into the CPU to keep that illusion going. And the point of all of this is to make sure that our processor does not sit idle waiting for a slow peripheral to do its job and retrieve data. Now the operating system may move jobs in and out of memory and it allows each job a predetermined time slice to access the CPU. And this is all done in order and that's controlled by the scheduler. But we'll talk more about that in another video. In this one though, what we've covered today is batch processing, single and multi-user operating systems, multitasking and multi-programming operating systems. In the next video, we're going to cover interrupts, the use of buffering and priority queues.